Inside episode 33 on Outsourcing Live, you'll learn about the benefits of hiring a virtual assistant, where to find them, how to hire them, and also some tools to communicate with them. All right, let's just jump straight into it. Want to get tons of leads from YouTube without breaking a sweat? Outsourcing Live. This is Outsourcing Live with Tyrone Shum. Outsourcing the hard stuff so you can focus on the fun stuff. Hey there and welcome to another Outsourcing Live podcast. Very, very excited to have you here today and if this is the first time that you've visited and started listening to Outsourcing Live podcast, well, a big, big welcome to you. Now, I'd highly recommend just to start out, a lot of people have asked, you know, which podcast should I listen to first and what should I jump into? Well, I've got a really, really interesting one and the one that people have been commenting quite a lot on is the Million Dollar Business Outsource with Dan Andrews, which is podcast number two. And that's a really interesting story because Dan Andrews shares with us how he's outsourced his business and he's generated million dollars from doing that. So, if this is the first time you're listening to this podcast, I highly recommend check out that first episode and you can access that at outsourcinglive.com episode 2 which will be there. Otherwise, if you just want to see all the podcasts that are listed on Outsourcing Live, just go to outsourcinglive.com forward slash podcasts with an S. So, I'll make sure I put that down in the show notes anyway and by the way, this is episode 33. Now, before I usually jump into it, I let you know what's been happening in my life and what's been going on and the reason why is because there's going to be so many other changes that are happening and the one thing that's going to be happening is in a few months time, I'm going to be traveling with my wife to Southeast Asia and we're going to be doing a a pretty lengthy uh, holiday travel sort of location independent kind of thing and the most important thing that's been happening for us is that we've actually been minimalizing a lot of things. So, really just selling a lot of our stuff that we've got here. We've got our own home, we've got like a three-bedroom house here. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we accumulate over the years and because of that, we're actually trying to eliminate or clear out some of the clutter that we have. I'm already pretty minimalistic as it is. I mean, I only have my computer, table and office and just some extra equipment but I've been having look down in our garage and there's been quite a number of things that were just stored over the years like lots of novels and books and stuff like that. So, I'm starting to clear all that out and just pretty much remove them before we do travel and as, as we're going to be traveling for a lengthy amount of time, I'm going to try to at least minimize like not having our cars stored here. Uh, a lot of things are going to be switched off so I'm going to have to sell a lot of this and therefore cars are going to be sold fridge is going to be empty, pantry is definitely going to be empty so things like that just got to be uh, sold off and that's what I've been doing just starting out in the last couple of weeks or so and we, we, we've been talking about this for quite some time, my wife and I and we're very, very excited to share this with you as well. I don't know if I'll be able to share the journey because <laughs> I agreed with my wife that I'm not going to be coming online at all so this is a, going to be a real, real test on seeing how my business is going to run pretty much without me around and I'm going to be setting up systems between now to then which is probably about mid-year where I'm just going to not be accessing any emails or or really just checking any of the business and therefore my team is going to be solely responsible for what's going on. Now, don't worry too much because at the same time, I'm going to be recording a lot of content prior to leaving so therefore, you'll still get regular uh, podcasts regular videos are coming out as well so don't worry about that but my team will handle that side of things and from time to time, um, I guess they're going to be the ones handling a lot of the support and it's going to be a real test and I can't wait to share that with you. So, between now and then, I'll be sharing along the journey of what's going on, what things I'm I'm setting up, what things I'm eliminating, how the outsourcing system's going and so forth and you'll hear all about that journey leading up to it. All right, so that's what's really been happening and it's very, very exciting for me. I'm actually extremely, extremely happy because this is something I've been dreaming to do for pretty much my lifetime and I'm finally getting to do it at the age of 30 before we have kids so we get to see the rest of the world before we do all that. All right, so what I wanted to share with you inside today's podcast is slightly a little bit different. Normally, I would do some kind of interview or some recording of myself and and share with you some knowledge and tips but rather than doing that, I thought I'd pull out a previous webinar that a good friend of mine, Pat Flynn and I did together and shared with the audience and this was going back a little bit of time ago and Pat actually approached me and said to me, 
Hey Tyrone, can you share with my audience, which is on Smart Passive Income, on his blog about how to hire a virtual assistant? So I thought, hmm, this is a question that gets asked to me regularly. Weekly, I get emails from people like yourself who listen to this podcast and also from the YouTube channel and also my blog asking, Tyrone, how do I hire a VA? Where do I find a VA? Uh, what tools do I use? And also, what, what's the reasons behind why I should start with a VA first? So I thought rather than create a brand new podcast on doing that, I actually shared some really amazing gems inside this special webinar, exclusive webinar that I did with Pat Flynn. And Pat actually just asked me questions and we had these questions lined up and they were very, very much the common questions that he wanted to know and also his listeners and audience wanted to. So I'm sure with his 30,000 plus audience out there who want to know about this, I'm sure that there's very, very much common uh, needs and wants as well. So I thought, all right, I'll put this together inside this specific, specific podcast for you to share with you those questions and answers. So it's like a Q&A that Pat's just asking me questions and I'll go through and answer each and every one from my experience of outsourcing and share that with you. All right, so that's pretty much what's going to be inside this podcast and I'm going to hit play right now. My first question, I mean, what are the benefits of working with a VA? Obviously, uh, taking time out of your hands and putting it in someone else's. And, and But, I mean, with your experience, what are some of the other benefits of working with a VA? Sure. Well, actually, that's a good point that we raised up. Say, it's just basically saving time and that's what we've just talked about. Um, a good example, as we've just discussed about, is the niche dual challenge that we're doing. And mm -hmm. obviously, I haven't done really much time in it in our for the whole process involved. So that's the key point. I think it saves a lot of time. You can actually do a lot more things by having someone else run and manage your side of that project for you. The other thing that I want to mention as well, another benefit is the instant access to the resources and skills that you may not have. Uh, let's just talk, for example, a programmer. Not everybody there is quite technical and I myself do have a background in computing, but I'm not a very tech savvy type of person. I understand the whole process. I know how to program. I know what to do, but I don't do it myself. And that's the reason why I've got a full-time programmer who's helping me do all these things. So you do get access to other skills and, and resources that you might not have. And th those things can really save you time. Instead of you spending time learning how to program, how to code, how to put a website together, those skills have already been basically created there from your, your hiring or your virtual virtual assistant, your programmer and so forth and you take that on board and straight away they can get into the project and move you much faster through those things. Uh, probably another really key point that I just want to highlight and the benefits is you get more done in less time. That's a really, really powerful point and a real benefit because imagine if you have three or four people doing all the same tasks but uh, multiplying and leveraging your time and as you just said, if you could have 10 niche websites going all at the same time, imagine how much faster you get through there. So that, right. that's an, another benefit there. And one last point I just want to mention, it allows your business to grow much, much faster. And I, as you mentioned at the beginning, you've got multiple projects that you want to get done and you've got a lot of ideas running through your head. It's just the problem is we only have so many hours in the day and we can only do so much in that time. And that's where it comes mm -hmm. to leveraging and outsourcing. And that's one of the real benefits of having a VA. All right, good stuff. Uh, so my my first question was really, where do you find them? I mean, there's there's a there's a lot of sites out there like Elance, Odesk, you know, who obviously have VAs. But then how like those are for mostly one off projects. How do you find a good full time VA? That's a really good question. I get asked that question all the time. And when I first started, I fell into the trap of going through to the contracting sites, e.g., Elance and uh, rent a coder and all those other websites and when I went there, yes, you'll find candidates but the problem is is that you only get contractors mostly going there. You might find some people who are willing to work part-time or full-time but you have to siffle through quite a number of people like hundreds and thousands of people to find them and that makes it really difficult because the goal for me was to find someone here stable in the business to work either full-time or to work part-time in the business. Ideally, I was aiming for full-time staff because I want to be able to spend my time training them, give them access to my business, showing how my systems and ropes all work and once they've got that, then they can manage my whole business rather than hire someone who's contract, just does a one-off job, once it's finished the job, then they move on and you lose that retention and those skill base where you've spent all that time into training them. 
And that's the reason why I look for four timers. So let me show you anyway where to find them. I'm just going to minimize this presentation screen and we'll go down to my web browser. Okay. So let's let me show you a few sites that I can recommend. I want to also let everybody know that I mainly focus on finding virtual assistants directly from the Philippines. And the reason why I, I focus on finding virtual assistants directly from the Philippines is that their English and their culture is very similar to our Western culture life. I've tried people in India and I've tried people in Romania and China and there's always, for me, it's been a bit of a clash of cultural differences and I won't go into detail of what my some of my bad experiences with them but time and time again, I end up going back to the Philippines and I find that the people in the Philippines are very loyal, honest and very reliable people and that's been my experience and that's the reason why I focus on finding people in the Philippines. All right, so... The one thing I just want to start off with is you asked me, where do I find virtual assistants from? And I recommend a few different places. The first place that I'd recommend is checking out job board websites in the Philippines and I'll show you a few of them right now. And also, there's a few other places like forums, there's friends and family of Filipinos or people that you can refer to. Like for example, uh, Pat may have come to me and said, Tyrant, do you know any virtual assistants? Would you be able to recommend some? And I could, you know, recommend a few to you as well, Pat. So that, that's friends and family and peer referrals. And then lastly as well, finding VA vir finding V virtual assistant finding services, which I'll also refer to you another one in a moment. All right. So the first one that I want to show you is called bestjobs.ph. And this is one of the most popular job boards inside the Philippines. Uh, I'm going to give you an example. In Australia, for example, we have a really, really big, big job board website called seek.com.au and this is probably one of the biggest job websites that people post their resumes online for people to have a look and hire and uh, find the right skill sets. Same thing in the Philippines. Philippines has a job board which is also capturing a lot of resumes and a lot of people who are seeking for employment there. And what you'll find is in the Philippines, it, they find that it's it's quite difficult to find a good job in the Philippines and it's just a lack of employment in there and that's the reason why a lot of international people come over and hire them and to want to offer them work because firstly, the labor cost is, is quite low but also too, the Philippines just don't, doesn't have that much work locally so they have to seek for sources outside there. Right here at bestjobs.ph, they have a section here which says employers. You can see my mouse moving over there. And if you select on here, it says resume search, you'll be able to find and see a whole list of jobs that, of job resumes that are available. And currently, there's 26,765 resumes in the database. And also, one thing is that this database gets updated pretty much daily. So you'll get a lot of new candidates coming through. One thing I just want to let you know as well too is that this job website isn't free to be able to access it. I think there's a monthly fee which you can just pay and get access to but the most important thing you need to be aware of is don't post any jobs onto it or don't post any ads on this because if they if they find that uh, you're uh, from an outside international company, I think they, they may ban your account but you have to double check that. Okay, so let's have a look. The way I go about finding people is I usually just leave the locations nationwide and abroad. Category, you can narrow it down if you want, but I usually leave it as any. Resume, resume date, I usually select a week or less because that way I want to get the most recent candidates. Right to work, I don't usually worry about that, so I just leave it as any. And in this circumstance, we're talking about virtual assistant. So I'll type in virtual assistant and we'll run a search on that. Okay. And it will bring me back a list of results. So there's 347 results just from the last week of virtual assistants. And as you can see, there's a lot of virtual assistants available in this in this job website. As I said, um, you need to actually be a member to be able to access this. So I'll just show you, for example, if I log in here, you'll be able to see the resume, but you won't be able to get in contact with them. And shortly, I'll give you show you how to get access to them through my account later on. Let me just show you. Okay, so let's say for example, we've chosen this one, the virtual assistant who's also a virtual web marketer and also a virtual SEO writer. The most important thing I usually just jump straight down to, the first thing is to just have a look at what, um, 
when the resume was submitted because I want to make sure it's current and up to date and I'll submit it on the 1st of October which is in the last week. When I find out what kind of qualifications this person has, so I look at the education and just to let you know, a majority of the people inside the Philippines all have a bachelor's degree. So it's pretty common or standard inside the Philippines for these people to come out with a bachelor's degree from university and the reason being is because they're very highly educated and also very well skilled type of people and you'll be very, very surprised what kind of uh, skills they can bring forth to your business. Experience, three to four years is actually quite good. So now it's they've worked for three, four years and currently their employment status is unemployed. That's a good sign. I can pick them up straight away and uh, they can start working me for me full time straight away. Now, let's have a look at the salary expectations. Salary expectations are around about 10,000 pesos per month and in my opinion, that's actually very, very low. Um, on average, most of the Filipinos are asking between 12,000 to 14,000 pesos and I, I'd be questioning why she's asking or he's asking for something that low. But you know, as, as most people would want to know is are they negotiable? and are they willing to work and usually if they're coming in at, at that kind of salary expectations, I'd go in and negotiate. I'll give you a rough equivalent, 10,000 pesos per month is roughly about 220 to about 250 per month US dollars. So if you're to hire someone for roughly about 12,000 to 15,000 which is the average, you're looking between 250 to about $300 US per month and that's the average virtual assistant rate that's going on there per month. Oh, that's that's like ridiculously low. <laughs> it is. And you're getting you're you're they're working for you for full time 40 hours a week and it's amazing what they can do. And they they just like you and me. They're very very smart. They've got a lot of skill set. It's just that the way the economy works in there and also the, amount, the how the job market is over there. Um you can actually pick them up for for a very very good price. And if you if you provide them with good benefits and stuff like that, they'll stay on with you for long term. I think okay, that's... So that they actually, for them, that's actually like a, I mean, they're actually asking for that amount. So yeah. So that, that's obviously something that, that they're okay with. I mean, Definitely. for me, it would just seem ridiculous to, to hire someone here in the US for $250 a month. I mean... That's, that's... pretty much impossible, <laughs> I'd have to say. Even over here in Australia, I don't think anyone would work for that price because it's not even enough to cover their standard of living or costs. Whereas over in the Philippines... $10,000 10, pesos per month is enough to have a, a good standard of living. It's it's pretty much the average over there. Um, right. I think that that's just something I'd have to get used to. I mean, I, I would love to hire someone and, and give them bonuses and, and whatnot uh, just to keep them on board if they're good, I think. Yeah, it's absolutely. And I think the other thing to mention as well is that bonuses are pretty much, uh, how do you say, pretty much... The, the norm for me to give to my virtual assistants because I believe in rewarding them for what they do and if you continue to look after them, uh, praise them, give them encouragement and support, they'll want to stick with you for, the, for pretty much the long term. So that's something that I, I'd highly recommend doing if you're looking to hire people full time. And uh, it's also like if you you got to think about it, it's it's as though you are hiring someone to work for you in your business. And if you're working in a U.S. company, we all know there's benefits such as uh, I don't know superannuation, which is for us like retirement benefits. We get sick leave, we get holiday leave. All those kind of things are pretty much the same. The only difference is the the dollar amount is different. Okay. Yeah. So basically, this is just a sample resume and as I mentioned to you before, to get full access to this, as you can see, you need to sign up as a member. Now, I'll show you for example, in my course that I provide as Mass Outsource Mastermind, we, we are actually able to access their database directly here and stream it to all our members inside Mass Outsource Mastermind. So if I went and search for Virtual Assistant again, just type that in there. Ah, I should also put down resume data has been a week or less as well. It's basically the same candidates that are coming straight out from directly from the database. We've streamed it directly and allowing access to for people as well. So I'll just uh, type in virtual assistant and I'll just pull up the database from there. Okay. So for example, as you can see, it's listed everything that you can see here. Virtual assistant, data entry, etc. 
And the biggest difference here is that all the jobs here have the descriptions, but also you have the email address there, which you can contact them directly. So I'll pull this one up just as an example. Okay, and there's their resume. Pretty much the same thing as you see from bestjobs.ph. The only difference is that you have also their email address and also their direct resume, which you can see right here. Now, if you don't want to find virtual assistants um, yourself and you want to actually get someone to find it for you, there's a really good service uh, created by Chris Ducker from the Virtual Star Finder. And what he'll do is he'll go out, do all the interviews for you and also... Uh, basically filter and provide you with the candidates for there. And it does charge a finder's fee for that, but it would save you a lot of time to be able to go and uh, find the people yourself. And as you can see, both Pat and I have given a testimony because we've used the service. All right, so that's, yeah. that's, the, that's the three top websites that I highly recommend in regards to looking for virtual assistants. And I know that uh, for a lot of people out there, to be able to use these services, you've just got to spend some time looking for it. And once you've found the right people, you know, you, you've pretty much um, got yourself up and running. All right, so let's yeah, move with, on. With, Chris, with Chris's site, I'll uh, just let everyone know because as I said before, I have, I have never used a full-time VA. And when I, my service with Chris, it was just for a one-off project, but it, it was actually really a really good experience. Um, so moving on, uh, we sort of covered the next question already, like how do you know if a VA will be good for you or not? Uh, based on their education and, and the price that you you go there, but I mean beyond that, like when you find someone that's that's good and you can add to to the qualifications for that, how do you actually hire a VA? Like, what's the what's the process like? Are there any contracts or you know just can you elaborate on that? Yeah, sure. Well, uh, let's let's talk a little bit about it in, in in just a general overview. The first thing I'd do is to hire a virtual assistant, what you've got to do is obviously find them first and once you found them, go through that process. Actually, before we, we talk about this, let's just jump back. I'll give you a quick summary of um, in terms of how do you know the VA is good for you or not. There's just actually a few steps I, I wanted to just share with everyone because it's important so that you might want to take this down as notes. The first thing I'd do is review the resume, which I've shown you in quite a lot of detail on how to go about doing and making sure that they meet your needs. Then what I would do is after you've done that, contact them and ask them to send them your send them their sample work to you. So being a VA, they may write documents for you. They may have set up some websites, those kind of things. And you just need to know uh, from their sample work whether or not you're happy with them. Then what I would do is contact them via Skype and set up an interview time. And via Skype, I'd just probably get them to hop on to Skype to, with a video camera and also a microphone. And I'm going to emphasize this because in the past, I've hired people just by chatting to them over Skype and they haven't had a, a microphone or camera and I haven't been able to see them. I haven't been able to talk to them. So, I don't really know who they really are. And nowadays, when I do my interviews, I ensure and I make sure that I do get them to have a video camera and a microphone. And the reason why I ask for that is because firstly, I want to physically see who they are and see if they're legitimate, if they're real. And secondly, I uh, wanted to test their English skill levels. And sometimes I have come across people who are virtual assistants that just have okay English but not up to the standard because if they're going to be dealing with customer support, they're going to be dealing with writing articles for me, I want to know and make sure their English is up to scratch or at least at a satisfactory standard. So that's the most important thing. And then once you found that they're the right candidate and they suit your needs, then I would hire them and trial them out for a three-week test period. And a lot of people have asked me in the past, can you just send them over a test task and get them to do it without being paid? Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way because a lot of times when you send a test task over, they won't do it because they're spending their time and they're not getting paid for it. So, I don't recommend doing that. I'd recommend offering the position, hiring them on whatever it may be, full-time, part-time and paying them to start their work and then trial them for three weeks or so. And if that three weeks, they work out well, keep them on. If not, then obviously, you've just got to find another person. So, so I thought sort of like covered. a like a probation period or something. Pretty much, yeah. I think uh, in in Australia we have what we call a three month probation period. But within three weeks, if hiring a v, VA, you'll probably find out whether or not they're suitable for your business. Okay, that's good advice. Yeah. So that leads me back onto how do you actually hire a VA, which is the reason why I wanted to cover that because there's a few things that you need to to be aware of. After you've interviewed them and talked to them on Skype and agreed on when to work and stuff like that, you probably want to agree with them on a monthly salary. So, negotiate with them. And the most important thing 
you need to be aware of is that they are very, very negotiable. You, you can actually say to them, look, um, if they're asking for 15,000 pesos, you can actually negotiate and say, look, I'd like to offer you 12,000 pesos for the first month. After the first month, if everything goes well and I'm happy with it, then we'll review it and we'll, we'll pay you 15,000 or stick at 12,000 and pay you monthly bonus based on your performance. So you need to need to be sure to agree on a salary and also negotiate on the salary and that's very, very important because if you're going to be looking to hire them on a full-time basis, you want to make sure you're getting them at a good price. Mm. Um, send them in contracts. Okay. I, I do have contracts that I usually send them over. Um, the contracts are really between yourself and the virtual assistant and the most important thing is you just want to make sure you have it written down on paper what they're going to be doing, what their role is involved in a business, how much you're going to pay them and also how many hours a week they're going to be working for you and that's what really the contract's all about. I think the next thing I just wanted to mention as well <laughs> is send them a welcome pack once you've hired them and I think a lot of people will overlook this stage because this is where you really set your expectations and set the rules for the business. If you don't have these rules in the business and you don't have these expectations, then your VA doesn't know what to do. And once again, I'll, I'll send that welcome pack to you as well inside the email. That's something that I've already pre-created and if you've signed up to my um, newsletter, you get that as well too. But inside that welcome pack includes information about your business, uh, how to pay them and when, so details about paying and, and setting up payments and so forth and also what they can, they can expect from you. So as I said, you might want to specify how many hours a week that they're going to be working, how much they're going to get paid per month, when is payment and so forth and there's a lot of things that you're just going to make sure that you include inside that pack to give them an overview of your business. So that's pretty yeah, much that's really yeah. that's really good advice because I mean I've I've hired virtual assistants for just certain projects for instance my iPhone apps and it's very important we've learned in in my iPhone app business that when we hire a new developer to the first thing you want to do is leave them with an impression like you're professional like you want things to be done uh, during a certain time period because if you're just kind of lax they're going to be lax too exactly. and if you just you set up expectations and act professional right from the beginning I think a welcome package is a great idea I might uh, borrow that idea for, <laughs> for our app app business but um but we found that by telling people beforehand we want an alpha version of the of the app at this date we want a beta version by this date uh, it's always worked so much better than than just saying okay just do it as fast as you can yeah definitely so that's it, it really also advice. also helps to set as you said um the expectations and make it look professional because at the end of the day if you're looking to set up a long-term relationship with them they want to know up front what they're getting themselves into and you have to sit in their shoes because they are humans like us you know they're not robots they're not just people who are overseas even though we're paying them at a low rate we we actually still need to treat them like employers and that's how I treat them. I, I look after them, I care for them, I provide as much training and support for them and that's how they're able to be loyal to me in the business. So what you give to them, they'll give back to you in return. It's good advice. Um, shall we move on? Yep, let's move on. Already, uh, let's see, next question we sort of covered already. What is the normal price for a VA? I know depending on what skill sets you want, because uh, I know someone who just does data entry or web research is going to cost far less than someone who uh, who will be doing like PHP programming or something like that. Yeah. So uh, oh, this is what I was going to show you. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll just open it up again. Sorry, everyone. There we go. Okay. So this is something I actually pulled from uh, Chris Ducker's website. <laughs> he actually put this post up very, very recently. So I thought this is a perfect one to show you. I'll just circle it for you. General VAs, if everyone can see that, that's general VAs there. Uh, he's written down generally how much a VAs would cost is full time is about 350 or up to 350 per month. Uh, so that, that that's pretty much um, what you'd be looking at with regards to general virtual assistants and also uh, full time and part time virtual assistants. There, if you want to actually know what other costs are, I've listed them out here as well too, which is basically. SEO and web development and all these ones down here show you roughly how much it is. Uh, okay. So that hopefully answers your question there. And I'll, I, I can include does, this as a, as a little diagram for everyone to, to get in the email as well so you can get access to that. But that's just a rough guideline of how much it costs. 
No, that's that's good. That's really helpful. I'm actually looking for someone to do some web development for me for for some new projects that I have uh, going on. I'll I'll let you all know about that uh, fairly soon. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. But yeah, I, I definitely need someone helping with that because I don't know how to do any uh, PHP or any of that type of stuff. So, um, yep, okay. great. Now since since we're talking about money. And I know a few people have asked this question already in the questions section. How do payments work? Like, how do you, when do you pay? How do you pay them? How, how does that whole thing work? Because that's obviously a very important, important, a very important aspect of this. Well, we'll go back. Sorry. So, how do, do they work? All right. Let me show you what I do. I, I'm just gonna just give you one example. Basically, in my business, I only use PayPal to pay to them. I used to use a, another a payment system processor called Zoom. But because Zoom has restricted access from people internationally, people outside of the US, they've only allowed for US people. So for you, Pat, it work, but for me, it doesn't. So it's not really an option for people overseas outside of US. And that's the reason why... What is it Zoom? Zoom, which is spelled Z-O... No, no, X-O-O-M. And I want to show... X-O-O-M, yeah, okay. I'll show you the website as well. This is this is actually quite a good. It's kind of like a a payment processing like a system. third party payment management. Okay, it it's actually quite good, and the fees are relatively low comparison to a lot of providers I've had a look out there. Because obviously these uh, these large payment companies have to be have to make some money to be able to cover the cost of running their sites. But I used to send money directly to pe to people via Zoom. And what I found was the good thing about Zoom is that it's got a lot of open, it's got a lot of stores available all across the Philippines so people can access their money straight away. They don't have to actually wait for it in the bank account. It sends it to the people in these stores and they can walk up to the store and just get the money straight away instead of having to wait for the next day to bank or two or three days to bank. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's one payment processor. Um, the other one, as I mentioned... Do you pay them... Yep. Like monthly or uh, yes, bi-weekly? Or how to... I pay them on a monthly okay. basis and on that monthly basis, I usually recommend to people to pay them on the first of every month. The reason why I say that is because you want to make sure that if you've got say three, four, up to 10 or 20 people, you want to be able to pay them all at once rather than stagger them because it gets a bit hard to keep track of for book work. But if you've got one, right, right. I'd recommend just setting one set date at the at the month, either beginning of the month, mid month, or end of the month, and just send it out at that point. And one thing I, I have told a lot of people is to make sure you pay your staff on time, because the last thing you want happen is to pay that not pay them on time and you delay their payments, and they won't be very not. I wouldn't say they're not going to be very happy. They'll still work with you, but it just sets the standard that if you can pay them on time, they'll keep reciprocating and keep working for you. You know very well, and mm -hmm. the last thing you want is somebody to pay you not on time. Okay. Okay. So with PayPal, I just want to let everyone know it's a great service. The only thing is, if you did it through the normal payment method, you'll be charged like three or four percent, which is quite high. And at times, I've had to pay about seven or eight dollars US per transaction. Whereas now, I found another method called Mass Pay, and uh, it only costs me about I think eighty cents or a dollar per transaction. So if you want to find out how to do that, um, just make sure you check out the next email because I'll provide that as well inside. I've got a tutorial step by step on how to do that, and it's also on my blog as well uh, for down cool. the track. Thanks, Tyrone. All right, so that's how you pay. Um, just wondering if there's anything else I need to cover that one. No, I think that's that's it. Just as I said, just make sure you schedule it in, and uh, make mm. sure that you pay them on time. A big big point there. Hey, Tyrone, can I ask you? Uh, Another question. It's a question that I don't have in a slide, but it's uh, something that I think is very important. We cover, um, and it's been asked a lot here. Is it like how, as far as like access that you give your VAs to your accounts and, and websites and stuff? Because they're obviously going to need that, especially if they're web developers and stuff. Uh, how does that work? How safe is it? Um, uh, that's a really, yeah, really good elaborate? question. Okay, uh, I was going to talk about that inside the actual project management system. Maybe what I'll do okay. is let me jump into the project okay. management system. I'll show you yeah, how I perfect. go about doing it. All right. Thanks. So everybody probably was wondering how do you manage your staff? How do you how do you get them to do things for you? And how do you get things done on time? I'll just uh, open up the browser and minimize that. 
There we go. Okay, I use a software or project management system which is set up online. It's called Active Collab. And Active Collab is a self-managed hosted system which I, I've paid a one-up fee to be able to buy outright. And I've set this up on my system. Now inside my project management, I have multiple projects and this is just my sample project management system that I've got set up just for everyone. And I'll just click on, for example, my virtual assistant's weekly task. I've got a project here. And this weekly task is basically all the projects that she needs to do on a week to week basis that's just always going to be there. She needs to do no matter what, checking support emails, uh, sending out emails to clients and so forth. And what I found is with web developers, with setting up and sending out information such as setting up accounts, uh, submissions to article directories and all that, there's got to be a way where you can centrally store all the private information such as your login details and your password. And within the project management system, there's actually an area which we set up called pages. And in pages, this is where we store all our information. So that way, if the developer needs to access this account, they can just go and look for the username and the password and it's all located in here. Same thing is for the virtual assistant, if she needs to submit an article to an article directory, she'll know the username and the password and she just comes straight here. And that's what we've done is we've set it up to be a centralized location for people to access or for, for my team to access. And this is all very secure because the only way they can access all this information is via password inside and if they can't, if they don't have that, no one else can access it as well. And everything's all encrypted on the website. That's how we go about okay. doing it. Question for you. Yep. Uh, say, say I have a website, obviously smartpassiveincome.com and I want to hire a web developer to go into WordPress to do some stuff. Do I give them my password or do I create a new one off of WordPress and give them that one? What I would do, I would probably create a separate account, say a web developer and I would give them the username and a password because I don't want them to go in and accidentally overwrite some of my information in there because I usually, with my WordPress account, particularly for my blog, I only have uh, posts that are in there and if my web developer needs to do some editing and stuff like that, I only get them to access via their web development so that way it keeps it separate. But in saying that, my virtual assistant has access to my username and also my password as well. So she goes in there and does all the uploading of all my posts as well. So it just depends on who's going to be accessing it. And uh, I, okay. I've got all that access all provided in there and that's why I don't have to worry about getting emails from them saying, so what's the password? What's the username for this? Please send it to me. They just know exactly so where there it is. is. Yeah. There is a little bit of trust, I guess you could say, involved with you know handing that information over. Uh, but obviously, they're getting paid for the work that they do, so they wouldn't get paid if, if uh, th they weren't doing what they were supposed to. Exactly. Like The way I look at it is that I give them trust at the beginning because I, I'm, I'm a pretty trustworthy guy. So I, I say, look, this is where all the information is and this is where you can access it. Um, and they know that they have that trust and in, in honesty from me. And I've, I've, for me, I haven't even worried because they every time they've got something done, They'll just come back to me and just report back to me, letting me know that it's it's working and I just check it. And they don't abuse it. And until the time that I find that this is being abused, which touch wood so far hasn't happened to me, um, then I've got backup systems in place to prevent that from happening. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've asked that question to a lot of other people who who have VAs too and they've, they've really never had problems, especially with VAs from the Philippines, I guess. Uh, you know, they they understand that, you know, that this is what... I think it's it, it's a cultural thing as well too, and because I I, I I'm I'm, a, I'm of Asian origin, Asian background, I also try to uh, provide like I know the feeling of of being able to get that trust from them, and also giving that same trust. So it's a reciprocated effect, and yeah, <laughs> I, I just know that when I'm working with Filipinos, I can trust them with everything that I have, and they'll just you know have that loyalty and honesty coming back to me. Okay. Now, do you keep your VAs, you have full-time VAs, do you keep them working for 40 hours? Like, how do you keep them working the whole time? Like, uh, obviously, you have tasks that are recurring, but what if, do, do you have them report to you if there's, like, free time to do other things? or? Well, what happens is, say, for example, they've got the recurring tasks, which are doing uh, every day or weekly, and then on top of that, I give them projects 
And one of the projects is the Niche Duel Challenge right now she's currently working on for me. And that's that's pretty much mm-hmm. taking up a lot of her time to do. So if there's nothing that's there for her to do, then she'll go about and actually find um, the other work that's from the weekly tasks. And usually those weekly tasks are designed to set up so that there's work to be completed. And okay, yeah, there's always, there's always work to be done. And I trust her because she reports back to me on a daily basis, give me a daily report. And I don't always check the daily report. I only have her doing it because I want them to be accountable to their work. So I get them mm-hmm. every day to submit a daily accountability report back to me telling me what they've done, how they've progressed, any questions and issues. And yeah, it's just there in the system. And I can check through it during the week or um, during the day if I need to be, but I haven't even need to look at all those things. All right, cool. Uh, back to the presentation. Okay, moving. Yeah, back to the presentation. Sorry, getting off of there, but I think those are some really important questions that uh, I've, some people were asking on the on the question panel. So thank you guys for your questions. Um, and there's a lot of them, so we're probably not going to get to all of them because we're closing up here. But uh, there's a couple other questions that I wanted to make sure we got um, during this presentation. One was. Uh, well, this one's pr- fairly important. What can you expect from your VA? What can they expect from you? I know you wanted to cover this. Yeah, it's it's a pretty important point. Uh, we did talk about it, uh, touched on it earlier, saying that you need to, when you first start out your your agreement with your virtual assistant, you need to set the expectations. And as I said, send them a welcome pack, send them information about your business. Just explain to them what they need to do in your business. And the mm-hmm. most important part is setting the expectations. And the expectations is, for example, how much they're going to get paid, how many hours a week they need to work for you, uh, do they, will they be getting training? And if that's something like that, what kind of training will they be provided? Provide them with how to use the project management system and how to access all the important data that you need and provide for them. Uh, and also, the thing is, is that I want them to be self-managed themselves. So if there's a task that I give them, I don't want to have to train them every single little detail. I want them to be able to learn exactly how to do it themselves because they may find different methods and may even find faster methods than I would train them. So I'd give them a task and say, please go about doing this. Spend no more than say two hours. I usually put a time frame on a particular project if necessary. And I say, just go out and find out how to do it. And they'll come back with me and complete it and just tell me exactly their methodology. And if that methodology is much faster than my one, I'll say document it, put in a training section so that in future if you need to access it or for future virtual assistants access that, they can just use that same method as well. So setting those expectations is important because you don't want to be holding their hand the whole way through the whole process. You want to be able to let them go out, explore and discover and learn how to do it themselves so that that way they're self-managed. So that that's a really important expectations and... I think one last thing I just want to mention as well too is setting expectations that they need to report back to you. And I did talk about that just a moment ago about the daily accountabilities. Make sure that every day they're sending back to you a report of what they're doing. And as I mentioned, it's not for you. It's really for them to keep them accountable because they need to know what they're doing. Because when it comes to time for review or performance review and you want to pay them a bonus or you want to pay them a salary increase, you can go back and say, look, this is what you've completed. If you haven't sent me a, a daily accountability report, I can't say how much I can increase your pay by. So it's actually a good tool to be able to negotiate and leverage as well too. Okay, that, that's a, I'm glad you touched on that because I was wondering about how you make sure that they do the things that you want them to do. So they, they're actually sending you an email or putting into your project management actually, system. Let me show you. <laughs> that's a good question. Okay. In my project management system, there's a section here I'll just show you right now, called Daily Accountability. And all they have to do is just log in. Once they've logged in, there's a there's a template I just usually give them. See how it says Daily Accountability? Mm-hmm. In that project there, they just simply log in and just create a new ticket, oh, sorry, a new discussion. And in that new discussion, they, they just submit what they've done for that day. And oh, actually, I should pause it right there because those are the questions that gets asked. Let's go back there. So you'll see right here, if I just, there, there's the daily accountability. What, what did you do today? What problems did you run into? What can I help you with to make your life job easier? Exactly. Life or, or to make your life or job easier. Okay, that, that's good. Okay. 
So that's that's how cool. they they these are the three questions that I get them to answer, and then in those three questions, they'll put whatever the the work has been done for the day, and that helps them keep track of what's going on, and also how to keep track of what we're doing as well with them. Okay. Uh, someone's asking about Basecamp and other project management software. I think those will work too, but uh... actually, that's something that I wanted to talk about. I think uh, I think that was one of your questions that you're going to ask me. Um, is it this question here? Okay, how do you communicate with them? We've sort of gone a little bit off tangent because we had uh, a, a structure in place today with the questions that Pat wanted to ask. So I'll cover this actually because it's important and it's a good question to ask about Basecamp because that's something I've used in the past. So let me just jump over there and I'll show you some of the tools that I use to communicate with them. All right. Uh, so I've talked to you a little bit about Active Collab, which is the system I use. Basecamp is a really good software as well too. It does have a monthly fee and you can just simply click up here to have a look at plans and pricing, which I'll click on right there. But I think a lot of people don't also know that there is actually a free account for the first person and I'll show you where exactly it is. So if it's just only yourself and a VA, you go down here where it says, we also offer a free plan, one project, unlimited users and no file sharing. And you'll be able to sign up to Basecamp for free. So what we've done in the past is we've set up one project and in that multi, in that project, we have multiple sub-projects. So you can actually run multiple sub-projects inside Basecamp as well. And as it says, it's unlimited users. You can have your VA, your web developer, pretty much anyone that you want in there. And this is a free account which you can set up with Basecamp. So it's something for you to all check out. And uh, Very cool. Thanks for that. No problem. And I thought I might as well share with you as well some other really cool tools that I use to communicate with them. So besides Basecamp, Basecamp is your project management system where you manage all your team in there, see what happen what's happening in the project, keeping accountability, all your logging information, all that's all inside there. But to communicate with them, telling them what job to do, uh, what project is involved, how to train them, I use some of these really powerful tools and one of them I use regularly is Jing. And Jing is just basically a screen capturing software which allows you to capture up to five minutes of video. So if I'm talking to you right now and I'm showing you what I'm doing, I would probably put this into a video with screen with Jing and I can capture this for five minutes and I can upload the video directly onto the Jing service and then send that link directly across to my virtual assistant or my programmer. And this is exactly how I train them and show them how to do certain things and get them to finish work. So that's the first really powerful tool and it, it just saves a lot of time. Another one, Skype. Skype is something that I use regularly. Uh, this is how I do all my interviews with them. I get them on a video camera and also I get them with a microphone and talk to them via Skype. Also, if I need to communicate with them on a specific task that needs to be done uh, with a one-on-one -on -one conversation or to go through some training, I usually use Skype as well too. Now, I think so most of them already have Skype installed and, and all the other software. Pretty much. I, I haven't come across anyone without Skype. And if they don't even have Skype, I'd get them to install it and set it up and to talk to me via there. But I haven't come across any virtual assistant who doesn't have Skype. So it's pretty much a standard across. Uh, a lot of people have asked me as well, how do you know if they're definitely working on the work and how if they're not bludging or spending time on other things? Well, this really cool tool called Rescue Time allows you to uh, track and find out what their activities are. And what happens is that they'll install this little uh, device on their computer and it'll track how much time they're spending on Facebook, they're spending on their web browsers, they're spending on programming. It tracks everything from the time that you get them to start work to the time they end. And it sends a little report yeah, back I've, to you. I've used Rescue Time myself and it's actually had, it's told me that I was spending way too much time on Facebook. <laughs> uh, Yes. So it's a, it's a good tool for yourself too, just to make sure that, you know, because those little minutes add up and it'll tell you exactly how many hours you've been doing things that you're not supposed to be doing really. So it's, yeah. it's good for yourself too. Exactly. And I know one thing that I find in the past is email. Email is a time killer for me. I mean, I have to answer some of them, but I, I try not to because I get them to all send me information throughout the project management system. Then I don't have to sift through all those emails. So rescue time is actually really good for that. Um, and then last, um, someone's yeah. asking. Yep. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, yeah. What's the question? There? 
Oh, uh, software. Do VAs have their own software like Microsoft Word or you know all the software they need to get those tasks done? Yes. And what do you do if they don't have a piece of software? Okay, most most of them do. Um, for example, like Word, Word, Excel, and all those. Most of them have Microsoft Office installed on their computers. If they don't, there's a lot of free software out there, and there's open source by Google and also um, Open Office as well. That's a free one, and they can download and install that onto their computers if they wish. But it, most of the time, I think 90% of my VAs that I've hired in the past have pretty much all the software. And if they don't, I just provide them with the links and tell them to install it. Um, oh, actually, there's a really good cool. piece of software that I should recommend as well called LastPass. And we use this regularly. So if if you have uh, certain accounts that are set up for article marketing, for uh, SEO uh, submissions and so forth, LastPass actually helps you store your username and your password. And that you can actually give this to your virtual assistant as well and she can save all the um, usernames in here and it automatically fills in those details for you. You don't have to spend time looking for it in your project management system. So that's a really, really powerful tool. I thought I'd mention that. Cool. Um, and then one last thing that I recommend as well is using Dropbox. If you need to share files, if you need to send presentations over, Dropbox is the way to go. All you have to do is drag and drop files into the Dropbox and it'll send it directly to your VA as long as it's been shared with them. Yeah, Dropbox is awesome. I use it to share files with a bunch of other people. You can actually set it up so that it's actually a file in your browser or in your uh, Windows Explorer or your uh, Finder, and you can you, know, you can just drop files in there, and then it's you can grab a public link and share it. And uh, it's it's a really really good tool. I use it, and it's I think free for the first uh, two gigabytes. That's I right. Think. Yeah, two gigabytes first first two gigabytes are free and. I know myself, I haven't even reached that limit at all. We, we share just basically just documents and spreadsheets and those kind of things. But pff, it, unless, unless you're sending over videos to them, I'd probably use a different hosting server to, to host the videos, like free service where you don't have to send stuff via Dropbox. Right. All right, cool. Well, thanks for those tools. That's, that's really good. Discover more resources to grow your business. Inside Mass Outsource Mastermind. Watch the video tutorials and follow the easy instructions to take your business to the next level. Start your 30-day no-risk trial membership at freevideoset.com. That's freevideoset.com. This has been Outsourcing Live with Tyrone Shum. Outsourcing the hard stuff so you can focus on the fun stuff.